Hello and welcome back to the Air Armoury. I'm JRH and today I'm looking at Sussex Sabo air gun pellets. really interesting pellets made by Sussex Ballistics Limited over in West Sussex uh, from the early to mid 80s. Uh, I'm not 100% sure of the exact years though. Uh, now whilst these were before my time I'm sure they're a bit of a blast in the past for many of you as I quite often see people reminiscing about these on forums and after reading a bit about them I thought they sounded really interesting so decided to get myself a tub. Now for anyone who isn't sure of what a Sabo is, I have here the Wikipedia definition for you. It says a Sabo is a device used in a firearm or cannon to fire a projectile, such as a bullet, that is smaller than the bore diameter or which must be held in a precise position. So what that means in terms of the Sussex Sabos here is that the pellet is smaller than the diameter of the barrel, so each pellet is held in place with a plastic cup and which um, to hold it in place it travels down the barrel and then once it exits the barrel the plastic cup falls away and releases the pellet to carry on. So let's take a closer look. Here is the tub. Now they were either clear like this one or black. Uh, both seem to have been common. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any difference or not. Uh, they came in tubs of 100. These ones are 2-2 which is by far the most common calibre and almost all the ones you come across now are 2-2 but they did also make them in 177. Uh, the 177 ones had a yellow label and the bullet came already fitted in the Sabo. I have a picture of those for you here although I don't actually have any of them. And by the looks of it I would say that they probably were quite similar to uh, Prometheus pellets which you can get now. So if I twist off the lid, you can see that they come in two compartments, um, one for the sabos and one for the pellets, which they refer to as bullets. Now if we look first at the bullets, which is the actual projectile, it is copper coated, but if I cut one in half, which I know it probably seems like a bit of a waste. You can see that they are actually uh, lead inside. Now, despite being in 2.2, so 5.5 millimeter, the bullets are actually only 4.17 millimeters uh, wide. Uh, they don't have a stated weight, but I've weighed a selection of them, um, and they come out at 13.8 grains. That's 14.6 grains with the Sabo and the selection I weighed are all actually relatively consistent. So whilst they have the weight of a normal 2.2 pellet, their diameter is less than that of a 177 pellet, which as you all know is 4.5 millimetres. Now because the bullet is smaller in diameter than the barrel, they are held in place with these sabos. Um, there are different types of sabo, uh, not in terms of these pellets but just in general and this type is called an expanding cup Sabo. It's basically a small plastic cup with these little arms on it which uh, kind of clamp round the bullet when it's pushed into the barrel. It closes around it and keeps it in place in the barrel and then after it's fired when it leaves the barrel the Sabo opens up and drops away and then the bullet carries on downrange and for mass-produced small disposable bits of plastic these are actually surprisingly uniform and well made. So before I start to assemble and test the pellets it makes sense to first look at what the purpose of the pellets were uh, as you may be forgiven for thinking why all the hassle when you could just use a standard Diablo pellet. Well to help me explain I have here a copy of the November 1983 edition of Airgun World magazine and this does actually feature a full page advert for these pellets at the back you can see there 
and this basically highlights the fact that once the projectile leaves the barrel the sabo drops away leaving only the bullet as it calls it because of and um, yeah because of the aerodynamic shape of the bullet there's very little air resistance compared to a regular pellet which has obviously got a lot larger tip and a skirt which causes drag and then the upshot of that being that these pellets retain a lot more energy downrange which you can see from this graph here so based on that I'm assuming they were designed as a hunting pellet now these can be quite fiddly to assemble and then insert into the barrel so when they were new they used to come with a small plastic loading tool uh, but as these were made kind of 30 odd years ago many of the loading tools have been lost over time now I tried doing a few by hand but it was very fiddly and time consuming so I made my own loading tool and as it's just made from a bit of old biro that was roughly the right um, size and then something to push it out with the other end so you put the sabo resting in the end put the bullet in place and then just push the whole thing down which then closes those arms uh, around the bullet and then the thing to push it out I've just got a drill bit which is about the right size and I've marked that as well so I know how far to push it out then to load that into a gun I'll try and demonstrate here might be easier said than done You line the loading tool up with the end of the barrel then push the whole assembly through using the tool and there you can see the whole bullet and sabo assembly in uh, the end of the barrel. Now the gun isn't actually cocked here as I didn't want to have to waste one of these pellets by firing it off just to make it safe so I do actually have just a metal rod I'm going to clear the barrel with. The gun I'm using for testing these pellets is my BSA Mark IV Super Meteor um, and I'm going to be doing that for a couple of reasons. Um, firstly that when I'm using non-lead pellets I like to use a brake barrel rifle as it's a lot easier to keep an eye on the rifling and clean out any plastic residue that gets left behind and secondly due to the fiddly nature of loading these pellets they are best suited to a brake barrel. Um, I think it would probably be almost impossible to load these into a gun that you didn't load directly into the barrel which then rules out uh, most if not all PCPs, CO2s and tap loading spring guns and it would also be quite difficult to load it into a standard under lever as I don't really know how you'd fit the loading tool into the compression chamber to access the rear of the barrel and that advert that I showed you earlier on does actually say recommended for use in brake action guns not suitable for use uh, in bolt action pneumatics. So to test these pellets I'm going to do two things uh, firstly I'm going to test the accuracy by firing 10 shots at one of these 14 centimeter square targets at a range of 11 or 12 meters. I'm then going to test the penetrative capabilities uh, by firing another 10 shots at this old guitar body and to make the test credible I'm going to also fire the same number of shots uh, at the same targets using standard 2-2 uh, Diablo pellets and those are going to be these uh, 16 grain air arms Diablo field pellets and I'll be using those as a direct comparison to the Sussex Sabos. So this is the accuracy test and I'm going to start first with my air arms Diablo field pellets as my control.
And now onto the Sussex Sabos. Here I have my first target, uh, I shot with the Air Arms Diablo Field Pellets as my control. Now the grouping as you can see isn't great but that's more to do with the gun and the scope than the pellets but as I use the same gun and scope for both sets of pellets it's still a valid comparison. And then this is the target from the Sussex Sabo test. Now it's not massively different, there are a few more in the centre here but there are also a few out here in the orange ring so the spread is larger you can actually definitely notice the difference in the size of the holes they're much smaller with the Sabos um, overall I'd say the Sussex Sabos probably aren't quite as accurate as the standard Diablo pellets now I've completed my accuracy tests I've set up that guitar body down there so I can test the penetration and see whether they retain more energy downrange and again I'll be starting with the Air Arms Diablo field pellets And now onto the Sussex Save boats again. Try speed loading it this time. to get it down to a fine arm. Here I have the guitar body. And I should point out here actually the reason I've got a bit of paper taped over half of it is because I've also used this target for testing some other pellets and that video isn't up yet so I wouldn't want to give any spoilers away. Now I have the Air Arms pellets on the left and the Sussex Sabos on the right. So looking first at the regular um, Air Arms pellets. Seven of them have lodged themselves into the wood and they do they still seem to be sticking out quite away. And then comparing that to the Sussex Sabos on the right, they have gone in further and four of them have actually gone all the way through the wood. However, if I turn it over, you can see that the four that went through were actually shooting through much thinner wood. Uh, that being said though, I think uh, the Air Arms pellets, on, even on that thinner bit of wood, might have struggled to go through. Now whilst the um, Sussex Sabo pellets have penetrated further. They've not gone in much further, but I think if this was uh, going into a soft target, uh, for example in a hunting scenario, I think they would have gone in considerably more than the regular pellets. Now incidentally, after doing those tests, I did have a look to see if I could find any of those Sabos. 
Now the grass is quite long at the moment, so I only managed to find three. Um, and they had all travelled nine or ten metres. Uh, all of them are actually in still very good condition, uh, to the degree that they could probably almost be used again. Uh, but of course there isn't actually any need to do that, as you get the same number of sabos as uh, bullets in the tub anyway. So there you see Sussex Sabo airgun pellets and how well they compare to regular pellets. Now they weren't quite as accurate and whilst they did have slightly better penetration I can't help but think that a pellet smaller than the 177 with the weight of a 22 fired from a full power hunting rifle is going to result in over penetration which is a problem that I've read about with these pellets so I think for hunting purposes or any other purpose really there are far better pellets out there. Um, they were very fiddly to load, and I think that must be even worse when you're out in the field. And the fact that they are effectively limited to brake barrel guns is a real drawback. Uh, but that being said, when these pellets were manufactured, it would have been spring guns rather than PCPs that were the kind of dominant rifles for hunting. Now, despite their shortcomings, I have actually really enjoyed getting a chance to try out these pellets. Uh, I think they're a really interesting design. Um, and really it's the fact that I thought they sounded quite interesting that led me to buy these rather than having an intention to seriously use them. Uh, if I'm completely honest I'm not really sure whether these were designed as a bit of a gimmick or whether they were a genuine attempt at innovation that just didn't catch on. Uh, regardless of that though they obviously didn't catch on as they haven't been made in around 30 years. Uh, however, if you do still want to get a cover of these yourself, you can find them quite regularly second-hand on online auction sites. Now, from that uh, magazine article I showed you earlier on, I can tell you that back in the day, these cost a mere £1.85 for a tub of 100. Uh, they're somewhat more expensive than that now, though. You can expect to pay anywhere between around £10 and £25, uh, and that's depending on how many there are in the tub and whether it comes with the original loading tool. Uh, I've had these ones for quite a while so I can't remember quite how much I paid for them but I think it was somewhere kind of in the middle of that range. So thanks for watching, I hope you found the video interesting and informative and if so be sure to like, comment and subscribe to the Air Armoury and until next time keep your arms in the air.